My name is Chris Meads. I'm a small group coach here at The Well. I'm always so pleased to be able to do these leadership videos with you. If you ever have any ideas or questions about anything um, on these videos, feel, reach, or feel free to reach out to me um, through Well Connected. I'd love to have a conversation. So here we are. Um, I know we, we use the word seasons a lot in um, the church, but I feel like right now is probably one of the biggest season changes ever in our lives. Um, you know, not to mention that we're here in Chicago and we just completely skipped over spring again this year, went straight into summer. Um, that's, a, that's a normal thing for us, right? So one thing that I have realized in this last year with the pandemic is our seasons may have been thrown off a little bit. Whereas it said that it will take about 21 uh, times to start a habit I know that winter seems like it's normally at least 21 weeks long here, but it's actually only 13. So when you add on the time in front of winter with the pandemic this last year, things look a lot different. And so as we're working out into this new season, there's a lot of things that maybe we've created habits in ourselves that we normally wouldn't be coming out of in this season. For instance, it's been about 400 and some days since the pandemic became an official thing. Um, during that time, that's 60 Sundays. So what did your Sunday normally look like? That's about 50 times that we would have gotten together as a small group um, in that time. Um, what did that look like now? Uh, our ability to serve, our ability to get together. What did those things look like? So all of those are more than 21 times. So what habits have we created during those 21 weeks of whatever it is that we're doing and are we happy with what that is? So my goal today is to bring us a little bit closer, uh, closer to uh, joy, closer to each other, and really closer to Jesus. So sometimes we will look at this time of personal growth and we, we use it as a self-guided tour, right? We come up with an idea of something that we wanna improve on. And even if we don't quite obtain the goal that we had in mind, if we have any movement whatsoever, we view it as a win. We're like, this is good. I've got this figured out. I'm, I'm, I'm good to go. But what if we're selling ourselves short here? Um, I think that personal growth actually should equal how much you know of God and what he wants of you. So, so let's unpack that a little bit. Um, God's vision for us is so much bigger than we can possibly imagine. We can't even fathom it. So... If we work ourselves into these habits in which we seem happy, maybe we're just being complacent. And complacent isn't as happy as a word as happy is, right? So, so what if that's what we've done in this last year? Is if we've worked ourselves into a place where we feel like, oh, this, I think this is making me happy, but it's really just made us complacent in our activities and what we're doing. So, so what would that look like if we allowed God to work through us? So one of the best representations that I have seen of this is actually um, there's a, a mini series called The Bible, and there's also the follow up to it called The Resurrection. They're by uh, Roma Downey and Mark Burnett, and they're, they're actually excellent um, representations. But the, the one scene that gets me every single time is when the disciples have been left um, to try to figure out what's going to happen next. Now, Jesus has told them, Jesus at this point has risen. Um, Jesus has ascended back into heaven, and he said that they will be filled with his spirit and to go and spread the word. But there's this season there where they are sitting and confused, right? They've been hiding because they have been affiliated with Jesus, and they are worried that they're going to be persecuted as well. And so even though God and Jesus says, go and spread my word. They're sitting in this house, in this room, by themselves, just praying and praying and praying, what's gonna happen next? Does that sound familiar? I'm just sitting in a house, in a room, for the last year and a half, praying as to what is going to happen next. Now, what happens next is just an amazing thing. Um, this happens in Acts 2. Let me read this to you. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a loud sound 
<clears throat> like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now that's, that's powerful stuff, right? This is the vision that they wanted to give in that movie even. But when you hear this, you're like, wow, this is the moment, right? This is what they've been waiting for. But that's not the, the part that impresses me the most. I mean, that was wondrous to see. But right afterwards, they just knew what to do. Their fear was gone. Their worry was gone. They felt completely empowered. They felt strong. They walked shoulder to shoulder to the crowd that had gathered to figure out what had gone on. And here's what happened. Peter addressed the crowd. Peter stood up with the 11, stood up with the 11. They were all there. Not one of them descended. Raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. This is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. So I think that the most important point in that sentence as to what we're talking about today is he raised his voice. Um, so here's a guy that has been um, scared to death. If you remember, he was the one that denied Jesus three times um, in the day, uh, the day of his uh, death. Um, and now they've been hiding in this house. They have been praying about what is going to happen next. And as soon as they feel the spirit fill them, he knows exactly what to do and exactly what to say. They walk out into the public square and they stand shoulder to shoulder and they say exactly what they are going to do. He did that because he knew that God was working through him. So what became of that empowered energy of allowing God to truly work through them instead of just sitting up in that room and wondering what to do? Well, within 150 years after Christ's death, there were about 40,000 Christians. 50 years later, there were about 218,000 Christians. 50 years after that, about 1.17 million. Currently, there's about 2.38 billion Christians in this world. And not only that, but it's the biggest faith population by over 7% in the entire globe. So anybody that says Christianity is dying, they're not looking at the big picture here. Um, and what we can do to really fulfill that. So if you want to talk about some momentum, those guys, they stood there, walked out of their fear, and spoke the truth, and went and did exactly what Jesus told them to do. They allowed him to work through him. So how does that translate to now? Well, we've all been in our houses praying for the last year as to what to do. Sometimes we're scared, and God wants to be working through us right now, too. So what are those habits that we've fallen into, or out of for that matter, in the last year? Sure, we could watch church online. They did a wonderful job here of making it inviting and uh, a great service that we could watch online. But when we're home, we start to create some other habits. Maybe it was easier to fall out of watching that every single Sunday. Um, maybe we would put it off and say we could watch it later in the day because it was streaming, right? And then we would forget, and then the following week, the same thing would happen. So we're human, we, we fall out of habits. Um, small groups, I'll, I'll say speaking for myself as a small group leader, it was a heck of a lot easier to put off a week of small group. Um, if certain people couldn't come, if we were doing it the hybrid version, whatever it may be, it just didn't feel the same, it didn't look the same, right? So it was a lot easier to make those excuses. And serving, let's face it, this was a hard year to serve. Right? We didn't have as many opportunities to serve, first with online church and then with one service, and just not as many events or things that we would normally have where there would be an opportunity for you to serve. Well, all of those things are changing now. So here we are, in a season which been, we've been given a clean slate. Time we can make a clear decision to participate, invite, and serve. We can make an intentional decision to start something great. Were the disciples sitting in that room, not knowing what to do, or just in our house, not knowing what to do, and praying for what to do next? 
At the beginning of the pandemic, I was like, ah, oh, I can catch up on my streaming. Uh, now, I literally have every platform that you can stream on. And the other day I sat down to watch something and I couldn't find anything interesting to watch. I feel like that's happening right now between us turning to summer, us coming out of a pandemic, us being locked up in our houses for a long time, that there's this new energy that has been building up in us to where we're like, nope, I'm done with that. It's time for something new. That's what I'm asking us to do as leaders here. We're ready to get out. We're ready to do more. We're motivated. And one thing I can tell you for sure is that people need Jesus right now. And not only that, they need people that know Jesus right now. And that's you. We as a group can sit back and we can worry or we can be complacent because we think we're doing things that will make us happy. Or we can realize that God has a plan for us. If we realize that God is in us, just like those disciples did, and if we let him work through us, man, that just feels different in a good way. So to finish up, let's do a, qu a few quick action points here. So what I'll ask each of you to do is reflect on your relationship with God. Where is it right now? Are you letting him work through you, or are you trying to rule everything in your life right now? How can we let God work through us? We need to listen to him. How is your community? And what can you do to grow your community? Have you been checking in on your community? How are your friends, your family, um, all of those people that are around you, uh, be inviting to them and really start to have those conversations and allow them to see how God is working through you. And last, stand with confidence and do his work. This is a decision that has to be made. Like you have to stand in confidence and decide to do his work. That's why God gave us free will. We have the ability to not do that. But what God really wants to see of each of us is to allow that to work right through us. So if we allow him to work through us, we can get up and walk out of that place of indecision and worry and know that God has a plan for you and everyone around you. So I hope this helps you in this new season. Like I said, it's summer. We can get out. We can see each other. Um, I can't wait to see each of you the next time that we run into each other. But I hope this really helped you um, see what God really wants of us and what we can do to get there. Thank you very much.